Thanks, Mailwell. Hi, all. Good evening, everybody. The agenda goes like this. We will be discussing about the history of the satellites, types of orbits, list of frequency bands, how the satellite is placed in orbit, and how it is launched using the launch vehicle, VSAT, which is very small aperture terminal, and finally about the Mangalyaan. What is satellite communication? It is nothing but a transfer of signal from a sender to the receiver which happens through the satellite. In this process, a beam of modulated microwave signals is sent from the sender from where the satellite receives it, amplifies and send it back to the receiver. So this happening, sending and happening can happen at the same time or after some delay. There are two types of satellites, active and passive. The classic example of a passive satellite is Moon, which is also called as a natural satellite. Active satellites are also called as transponders and they consist of a transmitter, a receiver, a power supply and other equipments. If you want to cover the entire Earth, you require three satellites to be placed at 120 degree to each other. And the typical lifespan of a satellite is 15 years, that is 1-5. On October 4th, 1957, thousands of people gathered in the streets. Shortwave radio operators tuned into the radio to hear the beep beep sound. Yes, Soviet Union launched its first satellite in space called Sputnik 1. It was a 23-inch silver sphere and had two antennas of 7.9 and 9.0 feet in length. It weighed a mere 83 kgs. It was sent to analyze the working of radio waves in ionosphere region. It was after this launch, US formed uh, NASA. In 1964, International Telecommunication Satellite Organization was formed, an intergovernmental organization which owns and manages the constellation of satellites. They provide broadcasting to more than 149 countries. India launched its first satellite Aryabhata, named after the great astronomer and the mathematician of the 5th century BC. It was launched by the Soviet Union with the help of them by using the launch vehicle Cosmos 3M. It was a 26-sided polyhedron and had two antennas and was covered with the solar cells all over the body except top and bottom. After this, India launched a series of satellites, uh, important being Rohini, Bhaskara, Intelsat 1A, 2A to up to 4, the Chandrayaan, Moon Mission, Mangalyaan, Mars Mission and uh, two weeks back they launched a satellite called GSAT-16 and the uh, special feature of this is it had the maximum transponders that is 40 which is the highest so far and today they have launched GSLV Mark III. It was tested successfully. The main feature of this is it, it can carry a payload of 4 ton. Frequency bands. These are the frequency bands used in satellite communication. As you can see, these are the uplink and downlink. The applications of C-band include voice, data and inter-satellite TV links. X-band include civil, military and governmental purposes like Air, traf air traffic, weather monitoring, um, etc. KU band is used for DTS distance learning. KA band is used for military purposes. Now, there are three different types of orbit LEO, MEO, and GEO. LEO stands for low Earth orbit. When we say a satellite is in LEO, it means the satellite lies somewhere around 160 to 2000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. 
as the sat as the satellite is close to close to the earth they travel at a very high speed of 28000 kilometers per hour and the time taken for the satellite is 90 or 90 minutes to orbit the entire earth as the speed is very high data is transmitted from one satellite to another satellite because they tend to move away from the base station due to their promising technology they can provide coverage to those underdeveloped territory areas wherein you, geographically you can't lay landlines or the cost is too high the applications include email paging and video conferencing this uh, leo is very famous compared to others because it requires less energy to place the satellite in the orbit as well as less power amplifier required and nasa has estimated that there are more than 8000 pieces of objects that are encircling the globe and these may include uh, uh, old pieces of rocket dead satellites etc the international space station is visible at this orbit as the name implies this lies between leo and mio and the distance is few hundred miles to few thousand miles the time taken for the satellite to make a entire orbit is around 12 hours leo satellites when pre- when placed properly in this orbit can provide global communication coverage the typical applications include uh, gps navigation and uh, geotic space environment and one more feature is that the north pole and the south pole of the earth is covered by this satellite geostationary this lies at the distance of 35000 kilometers above the earth surface when we say a satellite is in geo it means the orbital period of the satellite as well as, as well as the rotation period of the earth both will be same the satellite appears to be fixed from the earth but in actual it is rotating along with the earth speed they are mainly used to monitor storms cyclones etc the, the disadvantage is as the distance is very high propagation loss will be there and uh, resolution of the images will be uh, not good when compared to other satellites etc This slide shows the three different orbits Leo, Mio, Geo. This slide shows the differences between the three orbits. Now, the key part. These are the key components of a satellite. Thermal blanket, battery, solar arrays, transmitter, receiver, high gain antennas, digital cameras, bus structure. we will be discussing all these in the next slides now propulsion subsystem the important one due to solar magnetic and gravitational forces satellite tends to move away from the earth what happen it's this uh, this uh, propulsion subsystem it's basically a rocket motor what it does is it put back the satellite in the assigned orbit and the, there are small thrusters you know which uh, helps the satellite uh, placed in the exact location power subsystem any satellite requires electricity to operate the energy from the sun is converted into photoelectric cells by by the use of uh, the energy from the sun is converted into electricity uh, with the help of the photoelectric cells present in the solar array and the energy is uh, stored in the batteries batteries generally used are nickel hydrogen batteries power subsystem is a very important the satellite because if solar uh, panel is not deployed then uh, machine is entirely lost third one is communication subsystem it's basically a transceiver function 
and uh, as i said earlier it's nothing but uh, receiving the signal and amplifying it and sending it back to the ground station next structures of the system so so this subsystem makes uh, sure that the satellite is always kept pointed at the right place and they are not allowed to jiggle or wander it is this subsystem bit which uh, tells the propulsion subsystem to trigger the motors thermal control power subsystem this is responsible to keep the satellite cool always and make sure the heat is dissipated out of the satellite and the final one attitude control subsystem so this make sure that the uh, satellite is always in its correct original position and antennas are always pointed pointed towards the base station satellite parts transponder transponder does the frequency shifting part so it shifts the frequency of the uplink signal amplifies it during downlink typical output of the transponder is around 5 to 10 watts and normally in a satellite there are it will be around 12 to 24 transponders as i said earlier the gsat 16 which was launched two weeks back had a 40 communication transponders and this is the highest so far next is station keeping so this make sure that the satellite is always in his exact orbital slot and uh, the hydrogen which is the propellant is always uh, stored here so when we say the satellite uh, life is life ends it means the hydrogen is exhausted command and control system talking in our uh, telecom terms it means o uh, omc or operation maintenance control so this monitors the uh, vital parameters of the satellite relaying receiving and controlling of the entire satellite antenna system uh, receiving and transmitting the signals and power system uh, we have high performance batteries like uh, nickel hydrogen which which can have efficiency up to 30% now launch vehicles you require a launch a uh, high powered rocket to place the orbit place the satellite in the orbit so they descend they uh, a launch vehicle disintegrate during atmospheric reentry and separate from the payload there are different types of launch vehicle small medium heavy and super heavy depending upon the payload appropriate launch vehicle is chosen um, examples of launch vehicles are pslv gslv etc now how a launch vehicle works newton's third law to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction here the action is the combustion gases released during the launch and the reaction is the thrust created which makes the launch vehicle um, move towards the sky and the formula behind formula of the upward thrust is it must be greater than the combined weight of the spacecraft plus the vehicle's propellant and structure so while designing the launch vehicle they make sure that the entire launch vehicle is as light as possible to withstand the environmental stress you might be surprising to know that 80% of the um, uh, weight of the launch vehicle is a propellant these are the different types of the launch vehicle now how a launch vehicle is launched the first stage is basically the rockets and the fuel that are required to lift the launch vehicle off the ground into the sky uh, they have their own fuels it may be a, a solid propellant or liquid propellant now this first stage uh, gets disintegrated at a altitude of 77 kilometers with a fuel burn time of 1 or 2 seconds so uh, once uh, after 77 kilometers the first stage disintegrates and falls off so uh, scientists make sure that the first stage uh, falls uh, in the ocean uh, once the first stage is uh, dropped the second stage gets ignited 
so small small motors get the ignited and the second stage is used to send the satellite into the space after traveling at a distance of 277 kilometers and a burn time of 149 seconds the second stage also drops so again the second stage make sure that it ignites the small motors in the upper stage the upper stage is basically a satellite itself and here the satellite is enclosed in a metal shield the process called fairing after traveling at a height of around 400 kilometers and after exiting through the its atmosphere the upper stage also gets uh, filled off making the satellite alone moving into the orbit now uh, the, sat the solar panels in and around the satellite get unfurls like a bird opening its wings and gets placed in the orbit so now the satellite is ready to play uh, provide communication to the public vsat vsat is nothing but a very small aperture terminal and it's a two way satellite ground station here the hub station relays the satellites in the geosynchronous orbit to provide to transfer data from one end to another there are uh, three different types of topology here star mesh topology and hybrid topology in star in uh, star topology information is transferred from the hub station to the remote terminals with the use of the satellite in mesh topology communication between the remote terminals happen through the satellite hybrid is basically a combination of star and mesh i would like to tell a classical uh, example we have a office um, here a broadcast uh, services center which is located back side of the building so uh, what they do is basically our customer is a media office like sun tv raj tv so um uh, they are, at the customer end a playlist server is available the output that a signal output that is 260 mb is fed to the encoder where it is converted to mix stream and the two mix stream is provided to our, our end at the transmission mux from there the connectivity is towards the vsb office vsb office is the hub for all entire all the locations so all the connections get terminated here from there the medium is through fiber to our office which is thirula satellite air station so once a uh, signal is here it is then fed to the modulator and uh, block up converters and then fed to high power amplifiers and then the signal is uplink to the satellite the satellite um, uh, the, the signal is fed to the satellite called intelsat 3e um the channels which uh, they normally uplink are the uh, examples of sun tv kalangir tv ra um puduyugam pudhi thalamurai kairali etc and also uh, after uplink they make sure that the signal is reached properly so they also do the downlink process to check whether it is um, the the signal is reached properly or not at the other end the signal is received through the block down converters signal is demodulated and finally decoded and given to the customer so um, these uh, the signal which is uplinked it is sent to countries like uh, asia and australia um, typical example of a downlink signal is the raj tv so they are doing the downlink for the raj tv signal and it is uh, done from the asia sat 5 and asia sat 7 satellites value chains so the equipment vendors are involved in uh, uh, manufacturing uh, low noise block up converters hubs routers software etc satellite operators are involved in planning and cost of construction managing a constellation of satellites etc service providers so they lease the capacity from uh, at, um, uh, operators customers are basically small enterprises and organization So typical applic uh, application of satellite communications include uh, internet connections, maritime, defense, oil and gas, education, training, aeronautical, and lots on. Mangalyaan. 
This word is derived from the Sanskrit word Mangalyana. Yana means craft and it was launched last year. This project is mainly for design, planning and operation of an interplanetary mission. This was launched from Sriharikota using a PSLV rocket. And uh, this uh, before uh, sending, before uh, uh, raising up, it had a series of seven apogees. Apogee is nothing but a farthest point from the earth and perigee is the nearest point on the earth. After 290 years travel, this was successfully placed in the Mars orbit just four months back. India is the fourth country to do so after NASA, Soviet Union and China. And it is currently being monitored from Bangalore. So this picture shows the uh, Mangalyan launch and um, as we discussed earlier, these are the stages involved, three stages. This picture shows the um, direction of the launch vehicle. So they make sure that uh, whenever the first stage, second stage fills, it falls on the ocean rather than the people or the buildings. Now, GSLV Mark III. This is actually a test experiment which was conducted today. The main uh, purpose of this uh, test was two, two purposes. First one is to test the uh, heaviest launch vehicle, which is 630 tons and the payload weight is 410. And the purpose, second purpose is to test the crew model. So India is planning to send a manned mission by 2010-20 and uh, they are using to experiment this. So, so as you can see in the picture, up to LVM3 is a uh, separation. It is where the third stage ends and LM, uh, from LMN3XL110 the crew model is separated and it is brought down using a parachute. Now we are going to see a video on the satellites.
Any questions?